Excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? So I just want to apologize for the sound moving forward in this podcast. I just played it back and realized I had to echo on. This is a new mic that I got. So y'all forgive me. So there's an echo on here, but I didn't want to not post it. Um, I just want to give a disclaimer. Um, I'm sorry in advance. Work with me. Um, I hope you still enjoy it anyway. What up, girlfriends? Welcome back to the Hey Girlfriend podcast. I'm your host, mindset and intuitive coach, Kendall D. And today we talking about leaving the relationship or just leaving and not having to have like a reason like, oh, it was toxic to leave. Like, There are various other reasons to leave a situation than it just being toxic to you. And what brought up this topic idea is I was having a conversation in the DMs with on my Instagram page with someone about the current events taking place with the Miss Lori Harvey. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but Lori, she dated Michael B. Jordan. And they broke up after like a year, two, a year, something like that. And then she started dating um, Damis Idris. I don't get his name wrong. Basically, another celebrity actor. She dated him and they just broke up and they made it public that they broke up. And it was like, you know, it had been, she had dated him for like a year. And so someone wanted me to talk about this. I wasn't going to talk about it because. I don't know these celebrities. I don't really know what's going on. I don't like to talk about things that I don't really know the bigger picture. And I haven't really had a conversation with them. So it's not like I can speak on what they're doing. Like a lot of women are praising her and saying, you know, good. She moving on. She packing up, leaving, whatever. You know, she breaking hearts and all of this and this and that. She leaving unattached and leaving unscathed. And and she just dropping them. And then some people are saying like, oh, she's the problem. You know, all these things circulating around her but the thing is we don't know what the hell this girl is feeling or what the hell is going on with her we don't know what happened we don't know why they broke up we don't I don't know enough to talk about it but what I can talk about is that it's okay to leave I want you to know that it is okay to walk away like you can have whatever feelings you have about her leaving these men after a year of dating them or whatnot I don't know, you know, I wouldn't call her no heartbreaker and all that. Who knows what happened? You know, everybody's looking at these men like, oh, poor men, they're somewhere hurt. And I think it's because the women included are putting her on like this pedestal because she is this gorgeous woman. You know, she has it all. She carries herself with a lot of class. You know, her mom is Marjorie Harvey, and she's very classy. And, you know, you have heard Lori quoting the quotes like, you know, you know, know your non-negotiables and that you are the prize. You know, that's what Steve Harvey always told her. That's Steve Harvey's not biological daughter, but daughter, if you didn't know. And how, you know, I think we all put her on like this pedestal, like, oh, yes, all hell, Lori Harvey. Like, you know, we put her up there. And so we automatically probably assume that she's the one breaking their hearts because she's packing up and leaving. Like, oh, you know, because, you know, we see her. It's this beautiful woman that has so much class and seems to really know her way around dating and has it all figured out. Or so we think. And so we're thinking, okay, with her walking away and leaving like that, she's leaving them all heartbroken. But how do we know that? We don't know what's going on. We don't know she's really hurting from having to break up with them. Just because someone... I think also because we see someone, a woman that's able to walk away, we automatically assume, oh, she ain't hurt. Is she able to pick up and walk away? I can, you know, we are thinking like, I couldn't do it because I would be hurt and distraught. I could never just break up with someone if things are seemingly good. Or I can never break up with someone like Michael B. Jordan, you know, because we, we probably put him on the pedestal. Or we're thinking like, oh, she's crazy. She's dating these high value men that look good, attractive, got money, and she's just dropping them. You know, we we have all these dogs circling around, and if we're thinking about it from our own perspective, that's why it's I don't talk about it that much. I don't talk really much about what the celebrities do. 
I would love to have like a to eventually get to a place in my podcast journey to where I can sit down with celebrities and have like real one-on-ones not like where I'm trying to get the scope and get in their business but just like really talk to them about you know their feelings I would really love to do that but until that day comes I'm not going to say anything bad about Lori or Damon's or what's going on I don't know what happened with that but I'm going to talk to my girlfriends about it because some of you know about it and some of you don't even if you don't I'm just saying that once again it's okay to walk away it is okay to decide that a situation is not right for you after getting to know someone even if it's been a year I would hope that you would. I would hope that you would not stay in the situation just because they're a good person or just because they're great overall or just because, you know, there's nothing wrong essentially with them, but you know that they're not right for you. I would hope that you would walk away, you know, and that can be a difficult decision. It's not like you're making a decision where you're just like, Yep, bye. I'm a heartbreaker. I ain't studying you no more. Bye. It's not like you leaving like that. You can leave with tears in your eyes. You can leave knowing that you really don't hate to do this and still do it because you know that your heart's not in it anymore. I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to remember this because there's someone else that I was coaching earlier today, and she was trying to remain friends with her ex, and it wasn't working out because he wasn't getting the picture. And I asked her, I'm like, so do you think you still have to be friends with him? Like, what, what's the reason here? Like, what's, what's, why, why are you still communicating with this person that you want to break up with? And you're obviously going to date other people. You're really moving on. They, he didn't want to seem to move on. He kind of seemed to not get the picture. And so I'm asking, like, it, and like she was saying how annoying it was to her. I'm like, you can just walk away. You don't have to remain friends with him. What's the point? And her reason was because... She didn't want to end things badly or she didn't want to end on a bad note or such and such, things like that, basically. And I think a lot of women feel that way. You know, we're too busy putting their feelings before ours and it's like causing, you know, stress in our lives in a sense. And I wanted to make it clear to her, like, you know, you can end things and walk away without having to be your ex's friend. And your responsibility is to just basically be honest in your communication. Be honest about what it is that you want moving forward and that you're no longer wanting to be in that space in that relationship. Be honest about it and upfront. That is your responsibility to be honest and upfront about your feelings and communicate that. It is not your responsibility to cater to their feelings about what you have to communicate. It's not your responsibility to, you know, cater to their emotions or to heal them after the situation or to be there to hold their hand as you're breaking up with them, you know? I'm not saying you have to be rude. I think sometimes what we do is we think either we're going to be a bitch about it or either we're going to be, you know, um, emotional and close to them about it and try to end like we're in remain friends and whatnot but somewhere in the middle i like to say that a lot because sometimes we just think there's like these extremes of either this or that but somewhere in the middle of all of that it is basically you just being honest about it you don't have to be nasty about it being honest and understanding that they may not understand in the moment of that you know how noble it is of you to do that and sometimes people can really get in their feelings and make you feel bad about the decisions you've had to make make you feel bad about what you've communicated even though you communicated it in the best way possible the honest honest most nicest way possible you can do all you can to communicate that that you know this just isn't it for me there's nothing against you you know i don't hate you or however you want to say it but you know you still have to end things and it's not easy to end things. I'm not going to say like it's the easiest thing to do, but it's a must if you feel it's not right. And you want to know something else? I feel like it's also hard for us to reject someone because we're thinking of like, you know, I don't want anyone to reject me or I know how it feels. This kind of goes back to what I was talking about in my last podcast episode about settling and why you settle because you're, you know, looking at it from your perspective and your mindset 
of like, oh, I would want someone to do that. I would want someone to give me a chance. I would want, you know, you can't, you got to stop thinking like that. And you got to take ownership and accountability for your own feelings as well. And I think once you learn to do that, that you know that you own your feelings and no one else is responsible for how you feel or handling them, then you'll understand that others can do the same for themselves. And that's what helped me to do hard things like that. I haven't had to break up with anyone in a long time, really, because, you know, I've, I've been with my husband for now eight years. But there was a guy that I dated once that was really nice and everything. You know, what, there was nothing wrong with him. We dated. Everything was fine. It was a few little things that I was like, I don't know about. And I decided to end things with him. And... I remember I was talking to one of my managers that knew about us dating and I was talking to her and she was like, you know, so how, how's it going with you two? And I told her, yeah, uh, I had to end things because, um, I can't remember what I said. I just didn't see, it just wasn't what I was looking for really. And, and I was like, he's a nice guy, you know, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. And she looked at me and she was like, you know, that's really, that's really nice of you to have told him that instead of leading him on. And I can just remember her looking at me with that sincere look like, you know what, I'm glad you did that. And you were up front and didn't, and didn't just hurt his, you know, not hurt his foot, and didn't just, you know, lead him on or lie to him. And she was like, you know, I'm, I can't remember exactly word for word, but I can, can remember her facial expression looking at me like what that looked like. I'm proud of you. Like, I'm glad that you did that instead of, you know, I did, she's like, basically you did the noble thing. Instead of me just sticking around, hanging on to that and stringing him along, I was honest and upfront. And it wasn't easy, and, you know, and I think I even said something about, I don't know if I'm over my ex yet. And that was partially a lie, because I'll be honest, that was partially a lie. I was over my ex, but I, I really didn't want to be mean to this. I was really trying to be mean to this guy that was nice. So, like I said, I get where y'all be coming from, but at the end of the day, I still told him what it was. And it was just like, I don't want to continue seeing you. And I'm actually glad I did that. And it was like, I can tell, because we worked together, I can tell that it kind of maybe hurted his feelings somewhat <laughs> because of some of the things he would say. But it's like, at the end of the day, you know, it is my duty and my responsibility to be honest and to be upfront because I can't fake it in a relationship. You know, I can't fake it once it um, ran dry and it's like I don't see it going anywhere. I don't, you know, you're a nice guy, but hey, it's it's I don't see it. And also, you can kind of reverse that with yourself as well. And understand that when a guy is rejecting you and saying, hey, you know, I don't want to, I'd rather date other people. I don't think we should see each other anymore. No, that is nothing to take personal. That is just him being honest. And if you take his rejection personally, then that's on you and that's for you to handle. That's for you to look deeper within and see why you're taking it so personal. Because it's probably deeper than just him not wanting to talk to you anymore or date you anymore, you know? So that's something for you to work on. And it's just with anyone else that you may break up with. And the same with Lori breaking up with, um, well, well, I think they broke up from each other. It's not like she just dumped him. I don't want to say that that's what happened. I don't know what happened. But I'm saying, like, her to walk away, it's, that's okay. Like, I don't, I don't get the big deal in a woman walking away from something or breaking up a relationship like, I get it. Yeah, after a year, okay, it didn't work out, bam, moving on. And we would never know the real reason why she's moving on. I just want you to know that it's okay. Like, I don't want you to settle and to stay stuck in something that you're unhappy with. You know, you have to think about yourself, too. And a lot of times I think that us women have felt like that we can't do that. That we have to put other people's feelings first. And that's what makes us, you know, like a good woman and a nice woman and all of that. No. You have to be honest and understand that they, how they take that is how they take that. At the end of the day, you have to realize that, okay, I was honest in my communication. You know, 
this is what it is. It's better than, than delete someone on. And you'll see in the end that when someone does that to you, like when a guy breaks up with you, that, you know, at first you may be hurt by it, but you'll see like, you know what, I'm glad that we're honest and didn't string me alone. Because I got rejected before by a guy that I really liked. And it was like, hard at first, I will admit, like, the first week I was like, oh, this messed up. But as I started to process it, I realized that, okay, that was really big of him to do that. That was really honest and big of him to be like, you know, it's not going to work out. I had never really had a guy, like, actually break up with me. They just drug me through the mud treat me like shit until I couldn't hang on anymore you know I had never that was the first time I actually had a guy that I actually liked like actually officially break up with me we weren't like actually in a relationship but I mean call things off of me I should say I had never really had a guy do that they either ghosted or kind of just like the you know communication tapered off waned you know waned off or you know they treated me like shit until I just got tired years later and left and so I want you to realize that in breaking up and rejecting someone or being rejected, that there is a lot of beauty in that, I want to say. I was trying to think of another word besides beauty, but none, uh, no other word comes to mind at the moment. But I want you to know that 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 means that that allows you to continue on your journey to finding who is right for you. You know, or even finding yourself a bit more. Because I feel like after each relationship, you do learn a little bit about yourself. And I also want to say that after each relationship, that it doesn't have, not every relationship has to end traumatically. Like, I think a lot of people are thinking that these are traumatic breakups for Lori or whatnot. And they could be, I don't know, once again, I don't know. But what I do know and is, is, is that not every ending has to be traumatic. Sometimes it can be, you know, hey, it just didn't work out and we had to go our separate ways. It can be a little saddening, a little sad or whatnot, but it doesn't have to be traumatic to where you have to go on this year-long healing journey, you know? Because one thing about it, like I said on my podcast a few podcasts back, is that I do realize that when you have standards that align with what you want and when you abide by those standards, when you walk away, you're not it's not as traumatic and I tell you why again but I said it on that episode about you don't need standards you just you don't need to heal you need better standards but basically y'all what it is is that if you are abiding by your standards and you walk in with your standards and you walk in with your non-negotiables and you're dating according to that and then you continue to date someone and then you know it's great but for whatever reason, you know, it doesn't work out or something. It doesn't have to end traumatically. You can be sad about it and like, you know, no, I hate it didn't work out. But it's not so traumatic to where you have to go heal, you know. It's just that it didn't work out. Simple as that. Like, breakups can be that simple. Like, it really can. And I think sometimes we don't realize that it can be that simple. It doesn't have to mean that there's something wrong with us or that we did something wrong. I think in our world... You know, when I say our world, I mean us in this community, in my Avenet girl community. I think for us, it was always traumatic because of how tight we hung on and all of the other, um, all the other traumas and things and whatnot we had embedded in us. It wasn't just that breakup that was breaking us. It was, you know, the breakup pouring salt and wounds we already had. And so, yeah, for women like us that didn't have the best upbringing, yeah, breakups can be traumatic at first. But from what I've seen with Lori, she was raised right. You know, her dad, I don't know if Steve Harvey was like her dad dad. I think that's her stepdad. But either way, you know, she was, look at her mom and her dad. She was raised differently than us. I'm not going to say like her, her, her being raised was perfect, but it, it looked like it was much different than us. Just by the way that she quotes some of the standards and things that Steve Harvey and her mom told her to have and how they told her to present herself and how to be in the move in and out of relationships and how to be and how to look for the one. I ain't never had anybody talk, teach me none of that shit. I had to learn on my own the hard way. So what I'm saying is that she's able to move in and out of the relationships that what looks like unattached and leave unattached and unscathed 
because she has her standards in place the whole time. She's not dating trying to change a man. She's not settling. She's not dating trying to love a man into loving her. She's not doing her, giving her all for nothing in return. She's not begging and pleading to be treated right. She's being treated right. And you may be thinking, so why leave? Because just because he's treating her right and doing all that, it could be other things that once you get to know someone that you realize that this ain't going to work. You know, it could be the conflict, some conflicts that arise that you that you feel don't match. It could be the time constraints. Maybe he's busy and they're too busy for each other. It can be numerous other things that just make a relationship not work. And I think sometimes we just don't see things that way because we see it as, oh, if it's toxic, that's the only reason why you have to leave. Any other reason you should be leaving. No. You have every right to leave a situation if it's not working out for you and you're unhappy. And you feel like it just isn't working out for you. And you want to date and see what else is out there. You know? It doesn't mean that you're, you know, whatever they're calling her it, and all the names they're saying. And, you know, it doesn't mean that she's a heartbreaker or anything like that. It just means that, you know... You want to date someone else. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Or you just don't feel it's right. And, you know, it's good to be honest with that. And I want you all to be honest. When you are, you know, dating someone you feel, you know, it's not right. I, you know, after getting to know them, you decide that you don't see a future future with them. Hey, that's where you have to make the decision. And I think a year time, you know, with her dating him, each guy, some things may have arise, arisen, arisen. Some things may have came up that made her realize that it wasn't, you know, right for her like she thought. And she dated a lot of other guys before that. So, you know, hey. But either way, y'all, don't compare yourself to her. I will say that as well. What I'm telling you is it's okay to leave. It's as simple as that. Like, I want you to think about that in your next situation or relationship or when you're dating. Think about what it is you really want in a relationship. Think about the kind of guy you want, the kind of relationship you want. And don't compare the guys you date to like exes or anything. Compare them to a list of your new standards and new non-negotiables of what you're just not going to settle for. And date according to that. And I want you to know that in any given time, it is okay to walk away. You know, I would actually advise you to do that and it's not very often I tell someone to leave and whatnot but if you are unhappy and you don't see yourself with them you don't see a future with them they can be a nice guy nothing wrong with them all of that but if you just don't see it and don't feel it don't force it you know don't force it in because you're trying to be nice or don't say we just be friends if you know that you're just going to move on and, and you don't really want a friendship like that with them. You're just trying to be nice. Don't do it just try to be nice. Just really, you know, move on. And I want you to understand that once you learn to, to own your own feelings, you will understand that everyone else is able to do the same. And you can't look at it as like, you know, I don't like being rejected or I don't like anyone breaking up with me, you know, because you will make, you'll feel like something is wrong with you if someone does that to you. So you don't want to make someone else feel the same way that you would feel. Well, you know what? It's time for you to own your feelings so you can stop deflecting and putting that perspective on everyone and everything you do. And it's causing you to stay in situations too long or settle because you're so worried about how they're going to feel because you like, I don't want, I would want to feel the same way. But no, you can't, you got to stop doing that. And once you realize that you own your feelings and you can heal yourself and you are responsible for whatever wounds you have, maybe that breakup may have poured some salt into some old wounds. They ain't responsible for that. You know, they did their part and were honest with you and told you that they didn't want to be with you and it wasn't going to work. And they left and you may feel rejected and whatnot. But that's for you to take with yourself and for you to heal and work on, you know. They were honest in their communication. So when you're honest in your communication, it's the same thing. You know, you're being honest, you're doing your, your due diligence, so to speak, and you're being responsible and being honest and up front. Okay, let them deal with the aftermath. You know, that sounds like, that sounds so bad. <laughs> Just saying it, let them deal with the aftermath. But 
that's what's going to make for a better dating experience for you. I'm going to tell you that for real. Like, that's something that I wised up to quickly. Like, when I started dating for real, for real, not just, you know, ended up in these toxic relationships without really dating them and just, bam, we're in some kind of toxic situation shit. I mean, like, dating for real. It's like you're going to reject some people, and they're going to reject you. It's going to be a lot of rejection back and forth. And so during that time, I learned a lot around rejection and how not to take it so personal. And in a sense, it was kind of healing for me, you know? It's like I needed those experiences to help me to understand that I own my feelings and that I can't look at it as rejection, so to speak, like there's something wrong with me. And I had to look at it as like, okay, if they don't see me as their person, I want them to set me free. I want them to let me go. I want them to reject me. You know, as I started looking at it like that, it made it a bit easier for me to reject people. Because it's like, okay, yeah, this sucks to do, but it's like I had to get rejected and learn the hard way. I mean, I got to reject you if it ain't working for me, if I don't feel it. And it's like, let them, let them, that's their life. Let them do their healing. Let them do their own journey. Let them come to terms with things on their own. That's, that's their path, you know? That's, that's for them to do and to walk, not for you. It's just for you to be honest. I can't reiterate that enough. It's just your responsibility to be honest and upfront and let them deal with the rest. And it's just like you want someone to be honest with you. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm able to talk so candidly, I guess, so to speak, about rejection. Because it's not the first time I kind of talked about it. Like, walking away and rejecting people and all of that. You know, it it basically... It's just part of the dating process, y'all. It, it just is. And you can't make it mean more than what it is. But that it's just, yep, that's not it. That's not it for you. And so, my final thoughts, I would say, on luring that what I'm going to just compile what I do know, which is that, you know, she dated him, left him after a year. She did Michael B. Jordan the same way. You know, she that's what she's done. That's about all I can really bank on and say. So my thoughts on it is that I, I applaud any woman that is able to be honest in that that is able to walk away. Even if things seemingly are going okay, like if it's not toxic and it's okay, you know, it's okay for someone to declare that this isn't working out for me anymore and that, you know, you want to see someone else or other people. You know, I want you to get used to doing that because if you're looking for your person, someone that you're going to be committed to or you want to be committed to for life or even married to, you know, that is very important that you just don't settle on anyone. And that it's very important that you take, like, the feelings out of it a bit, you know? It's important that you look at it for what it really is instead of trying to look at it through the lens of, like, your own emotions and feelings around it. And look at it in a way that, you know, I don't want to drag someone along with me that I really don't want to be with and so for her to be able to leave after like a year you know I I applaud that I do I don't know like any other stipulations of it I don't know what else happened what else went down if it was a bad breakup it's not like it was a amicable breakup or whatnot it doesn't seem like it was all of that from what the presses are saying so, yeah, I want you to know that it's okay to do that until you find your person. And it doesn't have to mean that, you know, you think ill of them or you think they're a bad person, anything like that, you know? And so, yeah, I, I, I don't have any bad feelings towards or anything bad to say. The only thing that I can say is that if you find yourself, you know, walking away often well no I can't even say that because she's with them for a year it's not like she's walking away after like a few months you know she's giving it a good year a good run and it's not and it's like 
I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in the fact that, okay, after a year, you're really in love with someone and you're like deep in a relationship with them and stuff. And then for it to just end, like you can end situations even if you still love the person, you know? I think we think that sometimes we think that, okay, we can't end it because we love each other. But love is not enough, you know? That's, I soon realized that as well. Like, that's not enough. And I think in that situation, that's what a lot of people are getting, you know, tripped up on. Like, oh, she's the heartbreaker. She makes, she loves them and leaves them. But, I mean, <laughs> what do you want her to do? Do you want her to stay in a situation that is not serving her, that she's unhappy with, that doesn't fit, fit her life anymore, that's not fitting what she wants? Or you want him to stay? You know, no. So, hey. Just because she's packing up and leaving when it doesn't suit her anymore doesn't mean she's a bad person. I think we're just so used to not doing that, you know? Us in this community, in this African girl community, I'll say. I just feel like we're not used to doing that or being able to do that. Or we don't like when it's done to us. And so we're looking at it like, you know, yeah. But I want you to know it's okay to walk away, you know? It's okay to... So just leave if it's not right for you. And that's really all I got to say on that. You know, I want you to not feel inclined to stay with someone just because they're a nice person or a good guy. You know, I know at one point I was questioning myself, like, damn, do I even want a good man? Because, you know, I was ending it with guys that were, were, were you know, decent. Well, it wasn't like a lot of guys. It wasn't like it was, uh, it was like one or two. <laughs> I'm acting like it was so many. But it's like at one point, and I, you know, I was like, do I want a nice guy? And it was like, yeah, I did. But I had to realize that just because they're nice and they're good doesn't mean they're good for me. And one of the guys, the guys that I was talking about that I broke up with, they work with me. He even mentioned something like, yeah, you know, women don't want no good guys anymore. They want a guy that done did two years in jail and some, <laughs> some shit. And I just looked at him like, that right there was like, I hate when quote unquote good guys say stuff like that. It instantly makes you a, not a good guy. Because it's like, you got to understand that just because you are a decent person that ain't did no jail time doesn't make you automatically, you know, a catch, you know, doesn't mean that every woman is going to want you or should want you just because you're being good. Be good for your damn self, you know. And so it's like for a minute I was questioning myself, like, do I want a good guy? And then I realized, yeah, I do. I do. Because I, my husband's a good guy, of course. He's one of the, the um, very good guys. He was he was just more of my type. And I feel more comfortable. And I just it just feels right, you know. So, yeah, you probably want a good guy. You probably want a nice guy. But if you don't want that one, y'all, it's okay. It is okay. Like, that's what I want to leave it on. Like, hey, it don't matter if he is, like, a very good guy, decent guy, was loving towards you, loved you, treated you the best like you've ever been treated. But it's just a couple of things that you just don't see aligning with what you want in a future partner and you decide it ain't for you, it's okay. It do't mean you don't want a nice guy. It don't mean you don't want a good guy. It don't mean that you're a heartbreaker. It don't mean any of the bad things. It just means that that wasn't right for you. And it's okay. You know? So, hey. That's the last thing I'm going to say is that it's okay to leave any relationship. Any relationship if, it's, if you just don't feel it's right. It's okay. So, that's all I got. For real. Um, as always, check me out. My coaching on my Patreon. Um... Go to afbenetgirl.net. I have my books, everything there. Um, once again, I say it every time at the end of my podcast, I think. I am working on part two, Talk to X Chronicle Sebastian. I'm going over. I've written quite a bit more than I realized. I've written, like, uh, close to half. So I'm, I'm a lot further than what I kind of realized. It's just... I'm trying to get it all in there because this relationship was a lot. And I want every detail because the first one was very detailed. So, yeah, I got to bear with me. And I got a lot going on in my life. But I said, you know what? I feel like that that's why I feel all over the place because I'm not sticking to what I felt I said I wanted to do to begin with, which is these books. So, it's coming. 
I promise. I'm just dealing with a lot in my personal life, with work, but as I say every time it's coming, I promise. I promise, I promise, I promise. Um, but yeah, as far as everything else, appinthegirl.net, check me out. Coaching, um, where to listen to my podcast. Oh, you listen to it now, duh. Um, <laughs> my social media. Um, and my Patreon for coaching. And I do coaching that's also not subscription-based that you can check out as well, where it's just like a one-time thing that you pay for a quick chat or for an hour chat. All this, all this on Advent Acre on it. But that's all I got for this podcast episode, girlfriends. Until the next one. Peace out.